pray. Hallelujah. I love to pray. Thank you, Jesus. When you get committed, when you really get committed, when you begin to delight yourself in the Lord. Yes. I made a little bit of music. When you begin to delight yourself, I mean, when you really yes. have committed, when you stop fretting, yes. when you begin, when you really trust in the Lord, hallelujah, and when you begin to commit, as it says in Psalm 37, and then you just, you're just full of delight. You just love to talk to him, and you love to be around him, and you just love his presence, and you love the Holy Spirit inside of you, and you just can't help but just keep speaking in tongues and let him pray through you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you. And when you begin to talk to the Lord, the first thing that we've got to learn is to begin to say thank you. It's, you can't come into the Lord's presence without saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We thank you for your spirit, Lord. We thank you tonight, tonight for your presence, Lord. We thank you that we can gather together as a congregation full of love. We just love you. We just love to love you, Lord. We just love the sound of saying your name, Lord God. We love your name, Jesus. And we know what your name means, Lord God. Behold the hand, behold the nails. Hallelujah. Yahweh. Father, we thank you that you are an almighty God, our everlasting Father. You're the son that was born, that you're the child that was given. The government is upon your shoulder, and you are the wonderful counselor, the almighty God and the everlasting Father. You are the prince of peace, Lord. You're the king of kings, and you're the redeemer of the world. First lady of this house. We bless, we could we bless them, we bless them, we hug them with, with heavenly hugs, Lord, with, with godly kisses, Lord God. We thank you for the for their meekness and for their joy and for their faithfulness, Lord. For our faithful man shall abound with blessings, Lord God. Hey, hallelujah, you will not know any good thing from them that walk uprightly. Father, we thank you for the pastors that reside over this place, Lord God. For you in heaven, Lord God. We thank you, Father. And we thank you for the saints. Oh, for our goodness not, does not just only be with the saints, Lord. Oh, but we love the saints. Oh, we love the saints, Father. And we thank you for the leaders of this church too, Lord God. We lift up the elders, Father, and the evangelists, and the, and the prophets, and the teachers, and the ministers. In Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we're here to have a hearing word. Open up our ears of understanding. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Happy, 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 happy. Joy, 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 joy. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Happy is the man that obeys the Lord. Hallelujah. And and I tell you, I was not an obedient child when I first came to the Lord. I, I, I got to give you a little bit of my background. I came to the Lord 21 years ago. Praise the Lord. But the first year was not a good year. 
Say, not a good year. It wasn't a good year. Thank you, Jesus. I, I was a mess. I was a mess. I was probably about the first five years. I was, you know, still, you know, I'm still, there's still places that I love God because he just, you know, I've been a virgin in Christ for some 16 odd years. Hallelujah. God is good. You know, that's what keeps that smile on my face. You know, I can, I can, I can lay my head down and feel peace at night. You know, I know I'm not going to be taking nobody into my bed. Okay, let's be plain about it. That's the truth. I, I was a horror monger in the in the old te in the old testament. They called them horror mongers. I think they call them in the New Testament horror mongers too. Uh oh. They call them fornicators and horror mongers. Yeah, that's a scary word, isn't it? And I talked to you about Ephesians chapter five. The Bible says, "Before you were formed in the belly, I knew you. Before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified you and ordained you a prophet unto the nations." And I said, "Lord God, I can't speak. I'm just a child." But the Lord said, say not that thou art a child, but thou shalt go to whomsoever I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. He said, don't be afraid of the faces thou art. <laughs> For I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. And I love that line because he's with me. He was with Jeremiah to deliver Jeremiah at the very time that we're speaking the word. So don't be afraid to open up your mouth. I got a big mouth when it comes to Christ. I got a big mouth out there. <laughs> if you if you get in my presence, just if you get if you get in my presence for like three minutes, I got you. Okay. If you sit beside me next in the plane, I got you. <laughs> that means I get to preach to you. That means I get to preach to you. I get to tell you about Jesus. I, you know, I don't lose a moment because I don't have anything else to talk about. You know, once you leave the world. Ah. Moses left the world, didn't he? He left Egypt. Now, I, have to, I have to use a couple of different kinds of because I can't see. Uh, but the Lord, he, you know, when I first came to the Lord, um, how did I, I, <coughs> the first year, I wasn't necessarily doing everything that God, I just thought, you know, you, you came to God, you got happy. <laughs> and everything's supposed to be right. And, yeah, I couldn't love with Jesus. But I just kept going to the clubs. You know, and then I fell. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. But um, the scripture, I believe it says, and then that, I mean, I was describing myself. Let me just tell you all my, um, all my sin, my, because I'm an overcomer. You are an overcomer. More than an overcomer. Holy priesthood. Holy nation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm excited, I'm full of joy. I, I live in the place of the fullness of joy. Okay. Oh, I got so much in my head. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I get, thank you. I get so much. The Lord has put so much. Hallelujah. And you know what? If you keep reading this Bible, basic instructions before leaving earth, if you keep reading it, keep putting it, that's, that's all that's going to come out. Amen. It doesn't matter what subject that people talk about no matter what um, subject that they may speak about you can always turn it right around to the Lord. and that's the truth isn't it? that's the truth um i hope you brought your bibles tonight because i'm a studier and um I'm a, i like if you, if you have a problem in prayer you're like bringing yourself to your knees you gotta make start making a commitment all right you gotta start making that commitment when I came to the Lord, um, when I finally seriously repented, because I, I repented and I got filled with the Holy Ghost, I, I started speaking in tongues. I spoke in eight different languages. I remember this. I'm going to tell you the story. I was like, I got the mic. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, I'm, I, I'm going, I go to this movie set. I'm on this movie set, right? And, and this is how I, I came to the Lord. And there was this gentleman, he was very handsome. And, um, and he was, uh, um, he, he played Flash Gordon. Yeah, I think his name was Sam Jones. Anyhow, so I was looking at him, and I wasn't with Jesus at the time. Is that okay? Okay. So I wasn't with the Lord at the time. And, and um, I, you know, at that particular time in my life, I was hating myself. I was hating everything I did. I was hating everything about vanity. There wasn't anything that I liked about myself. But the Bible says, though you rent yourself with painting, though you make yourself there, the Lord said he will make your lovers hate you. Yeah. Just in case you had any lovers. Yeah. Or you have some lovers. 
He's going to make them hate you. Okay? It's time to, uh, you know, these are the last days. If you didn't get Jesus in the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, uh, you better get him now. <laughs> this would be the day to quit playing around. Amen? Um, in my playing around, I ended up in the gurney with, um, in the hospital with 250 high blood pressure, over 190. I lost both of my kidneys. I'm, I was internally bleeding, blood clots on my brain. A heart attack, a stroke, completely blind, and completely deaf. With three days to live. And I cried out to Jesus because I was scared because I knew I was not going to make it into heaven. Amen. The Bible says you are either hot or you're cold. One or the other. Jesus, which you'll be. Because if you're lukewarm, if you aren't doing, if you're sitting in a place today, and I'm glad that you're here because you're supposed to be here. Everybody in this here is supposed to be here tonight. I praise God for that. There's a word for every single one of us that God wants to give us. Amen. So I ended up in the gurney, and they gave me three days to live. And I, I, I cried out to God. I, I, I gave him one of those honey prayers, those prayers with honey on top. <laughs> I was soaking it. You know what I'm saying? And I said, Lord, please don't kill me, but do whatever that it takes to save my life. Now, I had prayed this before I ended up in the hospital. Do whatever it takes. If you're sitting in a place today and you know you're doing stuff you're not supposed to be doing, because you know that, and you know that God knows it. Amen. If you're there, you just... Say this in your heart. Lord, do whatever that it takes. Now that's a that's a bombshell of a prayer. That's an open wide wound. Okay? That's a wound, okay? That's a few. But you know, I tell you, if you mean it, the Lord he'll bake a cake. It's like baking a cake. You know? God's gonna He's gonna make it just right. When God bakes the cake. He's going to give you a testimony. I'll have a testimony today. Okay? And I did some crazies in the first year. I married a man that uh, is in the jail right now. He was a football player. You don't get married in your first year. We didn't begin. <laughs> Anybody in the first year. I mean, just keeps getting bigger. <laughs> and this was like 17 years ago. <clears throat> but, no, 18. No, 19. No, this is 20 years. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I married a serial killer. You know anybody? Do you know anybody close to you that married a serial killer? I mean, as in, you know I mean? I mean, really. <laughs> you know, I really know how to pick them. That's probably why I'm a virgin today in Christ. I just don't trust you. Okay? <laughs> you might pick up a brick or something. You know? <laughs> don't like what I said about Jesus, right? <laughs> For real. <laughs> I have been to these serious killers. And, he, I, and, and I told him I just came out. He just worded to God. I said, I came from the pulpit. I just finished preaching. Now, you know, when you come from the pulpit, you're like anointed. You're like, you know, you're high. And you know what I'm saying? You haven't come down yet. Like now, right? And, and so, and, and, and so he's, he's like, I said, yeah, I preach in Jesus. Oh, it's just wonderful. And he says, yeah, I want to hear all that. And, and the girl on the other seat, she said, I'm a sin by the window. She had a window seat, too. I wouldn't have given it home. She said, oh, I want to hear what you said. I want to hear. I want to hear about Jesus. You never know. So a little loud. I'm deaf, so I naturally talk a little loud. Hallelujah. So everybody hears. I want everybody. I, I love to draw crowds. I love to draw crowds for Jesus. I do it. I bring him in the in the grocery store. I, you know, come here. You know, we have power and we have authority. Amen. If I want to draw a crowd, I'm gonna draw a crowd. I'm gonna draw. You know, I used to drive them away. 
Thank you, Jesus. We're going to draw a drop crowd yeah. in your school, Amen. you know, in your colleges, wherever, at your workplace. Amen. It don't matter what, what they say. You can't talk about Jesus. Okay, we're going to talk about J.C. <laughs> Anybody know who J.C. is? And it doesn't make any sense, does it, really? It doesn't make any sense that they say that we, we're able to um, free speak, freedom of speech and you can't say, you can, you can cuss and you can, you can, you know, uh, say all manner of evil, you know. But the Bible does say, praise God, the Bible does say, love your enemies. We're going to talk about that. Bless your enemies. Bless them that curse you. I've had people, I've had this one woman, she cursed me out. Ooh, she's on the phone. And she cursed me bad. I called her, I have like um, 5,000 friends on Facebook, and then another few thousand over there. And I have probably have maybe at least three or 4,000 people that have my phone, because I give it to everybody. Uh, that's, you know, I give it to everybody that, is lost. Okay. okay? Yeah. If you're lost. If you already if Jesus, if you're already with him, you know, we don't just need to sit and converse wonderfully about Jesus. Go get somebody that's lost and bring them. Okay? I don't I don't waste time on the phone with people, oh I just want to just we just gonna chat about Jesus. No we're not. I'm too busy. I got people to find that are lost. I can't waste my my time, you know, all cut up in gab, you know, no, it's not time to gab. I want you to, um, let me put on my glasses. Thank you, Jesus. Are you happy? I hope you're happy. And I hope you're happy because of the Lord in your life, Amen. because that, that's really The world. I, I was telling, starting to tell you. If I start to tell you just a story and then I come back, it's okay. I'm getting old. It's okay. Um, thank you, Jesus. I'm allowed to do that. You know, <laughs> I'm, allowed do that. I'm allowed to forget things and then remember things. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so, I, I, when I first got filled with the Holy Ghost, can I tell you that? that that's an awesome story. I, I was on the film set. I'm looking at this guy. I'm like, Lord, if you just give me this man. I promise I'll quit drugs, and because I was a drug addict, I used to I smoke cocaine. Anybody? Do they smoke cocaine in the city? It's nice to you. I can't imagine you even got cocaine in the city. They don't have like methamphetamines in this city, right? They do. Oh my God! How do you get it? Do you fly in? Oh my God! That's sad. And, and sometimes it's the smaller towns. That do more drugs, I hear. Yes. Yeah, because like you, maybe you think you got nothing to do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this is all, you ought to be having a lot of church then, you know, and saving a lot of people. There's a lot of people out there to be saved. Thank you, Jesus. God is a holy God. Amen. He said, "Be holy, even as your heavenly Father in heaven is holy." Thank you, Jesus. Without spot and blemish. Amen. So I had a lot of spot and a lot of blemish. I was a mess. Um, before I came to the Lord, I was I was vanity. I made about seventeen feature films, and you know, and started on a lot of stuff that that made, didn't make me feel good, it didn't give me happiness. Like flights of, it wasn't joy. It was flights of wow, more drugs. You know, um, wasn't good. It wasn't good, and I was wasting away, and I was begging God to kill me, and it was a, a daily prayer. Wow. You know, I, I was truly um, asking God to take me. When I was five years old, I, uh, I fell in love with Jesus. My mother had left me on the doorstep. My father was an abuser, um, a really bad, evil abuser. And he would beat me for sometimes hours at a time. And so when I went to, when he shoved us off to church, please, not the camera. I'm on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Start 
pose and stand like this. <laughs> um, um, but um, I, wrote, I wrote it in my book, I wrote all about it, and I forgave my father. I forgave my father. But um, he's not alive. I, I, I prayed for Jesus that either he would kill me or he would kill him. And uh, I believe my sisters were praying the same stuff. But um, it was not a good childhood. And, but when I went to church, boy, I found my place, my rest in, in Jesus in this place. I, I found, I, I, when I was a child, they told me that Jesus loved the little children. Oh, my God, I was blown away. Wow, somebody, because my mother never told me she loved me. She just kind of dropped me off with a little suitcase. And, and I watched her go down the dirt road. And uh, I was born in Canada. And um, we have dirt roads there. And then uh, my father, uh, he didn't believe that I was his. So he didn't love me. And, and I reminded him of my mother. They were never married, so they called you a bastard child, you know. And, um, but Jesus said he loved me. And it was awesome. It was awesome words to hear. You can't even imagine how, what it feels like to a five-year-old kid that hears somebody say, this man loves you. Who is he? He's God. Who's God? He made the world. In the beginning was the word. The word was God. And God was the word. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. That's Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's yes. awesome. Yes. And so I fell in love. And I just thought, I just came back to my first love. Yes. Turn to Revelation. Yes. So I'm on this film set. Let's skip over onto the film set. And I'm telling the Lord, because I had, after my father died, I ran away from home. And, uh, I just sought the world. I wanted to find how to get mine. I believe that if you got on that TV, then people would love you. You would hear it more. You know? And that's how our children are growing up today. They think that if they just, just be a star, if I can just be a singer or a dancer, or, and we get caught up in this mess. And so I would say, don't follow me as you follow. Vanity means worthlessness. That's what vanity means. It means worthless. And so I became exactly what my name described, worthless. And Denise means wise discerner. That's my real name. And I know that Jesus gave me that name. He must have put it in my mother so she could hear anything. She heard that. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I am a, a black woman. I'm black, American Indian, Hawaiian, German, Polish, and Hebrew. And if that, if I was, if that was the, if that was the, how did it, baby's daddy? If I was the baby's daddy. No, if I was the, if he was my daddy. Yeah. That's what I'd be, so. Amen. I guess I'll find out when I get home, huh? Amen. He said I was not his, but you never know, right? I mean, we didn't have DNA back then. We didn't have that kind of stuff going. Can you imagine how many people that may be your mothers and fathers and there are not? <laughs> Whoa! Oh, good crazy old man. That's really not your papa. Oh, no. Find our puppets. <laughs> Think about it, you know. Oh, and these poor children growing up with this kind of stuff. Can you imagine they're gonna play the tape one day for you? That's your papa, he did not want you. That's a sad, this is a sad place that we're living in, Saints. Don't get caught up in this world, okay? It's like not get don't we have a great flag, it's nice, but I'm not here for the flag. I'm not here, I'm not here for America. America, uh-uh. Sorry, I'm living for the king too. Forget America. America did nothing for me. But they did, Jesus did forgive my debts. Yes. Hallelujah. He not only forgave our sin, but he forgave my debt. You know that up, up until this point, you know, 2013, just last year, Jesus wiped away a debt. I had a, a last debt in the IRS of $160,000 when God says that he forgives debt. No, that was the third time. I don't know what you all been busy doing, <laughs> but I'm busy praying and believing God. And the Lord, for the third time, I prayed. And the IRS said, the IRS called me up, what'd you do with the money? <laughs> I was like, pardon? What'd you do? And that's how she sounded. What'd you do with the money? <laughs> I was like, um, I spent the money, ma'am. I spent the money. And I began to break it down, everything I bought. 
and everybody that I gave to. Thank you, Jesus, because God had opened up the windows, because I had been, not, I wouldn't say broke, God provided every one of my needs, because he promised to do that. He didn't give me all my wants, amen? But he began to give me all my wants when I started to obey him, hello? And I always was obedient with tithes and offerings. Amen? That's like nothing. 10%? You know, come on. 10% in the liberal offering? Because in Hollywood, they take all your money, okay? They want everything. The lawyers want to cut. The thieves, they got to cut. They got, the thieves got to get you. Okay, because that's who you're dwelling with. That's who you're living. You become a thief, and the thieves steal from you. And you steal back from the thief. You know, it's a merry-go-round. But then, and you got your accountants, okay? They want to cut. They got like at least 15. They take more than God. Then, and the lawyers take 35. They take way more than God. You know, and then your taxes. The, oh, my God. They're 37%. They take more than everybody. Right? All right now, but the, the, the Bible says the government is, sits on the, the shoulder of Jesus, Amen. right? Amen. Okay now, so you even believe, you either believe that in the word. I want to know, when you open up your Bible, do you actually believe what it says? Or you just read it, it's not for you. Do you believe that all the promises that he speaks of, do you believe them that they're for you and that you can work this thing? I, I wanted to succeed in the Bible. I wanted to, to do what he said because I was not a doer. I was a looker, a seer of the word, but I wasn't a doer. It took some time. And I was saying, I, I spent a lot of time saying, I'm sorry. Sorry. I just yelled at somebody again. Sorry. I just thought something again. Sorry. I just slept with that guy. Sorry. You know? Come on, saints. I remember Jesus saying, you just a sorry, sorry saint, aren't you? That's what he said. He's rebellious and you're stubborn. Amen. You know, it's one thing when a person tells you, but when Jesus himself tells you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So, I got to tell you, I, I got, you got to get straight with the Lord. I got straight with the Lord. And I want God to work out all the crooked places and get them out of me. Amen. Um, but I got filled with the Holy Ghost. You know, Jesus had to fill me with the Holy Ghost. I'll tell you what, I had a foul mouth. I, my mouth was so bad. But that was just me, right? Y'all have never corrupt communication. You know nothing about it, right? Hold on a second. I'm going to put these back so I can see who's raising their hand. Oh, that's right. Let me just, let me just stand here and tell on myself. I was a bad, bad girl. When I came to the Lord, I had a cussing mouth. I remember one of my best friends said, yo, why don't you uh, read a dictionary or something like that? Is? Man, that, that's hard. That's hard. Because that lives with you for the rest of your life. <laughs> Finally, I started reading a dictionary, too. When you read the Bible, you know. Anyhow, so um, I remember I came, when I came to the Lord, okay? I'm going to stay on that story. Okay. I can't, I can't walk with this, huh? You, you don't have one of those mics that they no. Okay. So, uh, praise the Lord. Okay. So I, I got, I got to, I got to, you know, I got to take you there. <laughs> okay. So, um, I, um, I want to get high. And I tell the Lord that if you just give me that guy, well, you know that's a lie. You just give me that man. I promise I will, I will, I will not get high again. And you know that's a lie. You make a promise. I'm not even with Jesus yet, so have mercy, right? So, but the Lord has a plan that day. And he brings the man to me. I'm like, wow. Little, 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 and it was on the set, in the movie set, right? And he was like, I was one of the stars, and he was the star of the of film. And, and, uh, and he asked me to go to lunch. And I was like, wow, God works fast. He's <laughs> good. God is good. And so um, we get into his car, and, I, I, uh, and, and he's sitting there, and I'm sitting here, and there's this big old Bible sitting right there in between us. 
And I was like, so uh, you carry that thing everywhere you go? <laughs> I'm not saved, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm still vanity. Thank you, Jesus. So I said, he said, yeah, I sure do. And it was so big. It was so big. It was unusually big, and it was tall, and it was heavy. And I was like, okay. And it, it looked like it was just, like, used, right? He says, so, you've been saved? Have you been saved? And I said, um, saved from what? <laughs> It was vanity. Come on. Right? So I, I was like, um, no, really, say from, from what? I didn't know. You know, I had lost that, you know? You, when you're a child, you do as a child. And you grow up. Amen? It's time to get saved, man. And, and, and uh, he said, would you like uh, some prayer tonight? And I was thinking about my drugs at home. And I was like, that's not possible. <laughs> you know? That's not possible. Not tonight. It was like one more night with the frogs. You guys read about the frogs, right? One in the Old Testament, in Egypt. Frogs, right? And so I went to have one more night with the frogs. Oh my God. But listen, the, um, the drugs didn't work. Real, the drugs would not work. It was the same drugs I just used the night before. It didn't make any sense, but the drugs, God stopped the drugs from working. And so as I fell down and I called him, I said, "Look, I said, oh my goodness, I think I need some prayer." And I'm thinking almost, so God can use the drugs so they work. That's how stoned I was. That's how. could be in a magazine the next day. You just didn't tell on yourself in those days. You guys remember those days? You don't. 92. You weren't even born, right? Thank you. That was so not right. I mean, I was born in 59. You know, the Lord could have said 60. He could have told my mama, just wait. So you can give her a 60, 1960. It sounds better, you know, 1960. You know what I mean? Stick me in the 59s, you know? Jesus. But anyhow, so for four hours, I'm repenting. I'm telling this total stranger everything of everything that was, you know, and, and this is, this in the church today, didn't John teach us? They came repenting. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we need to be real careful when we get up to get washed and baptized in the name of Jesus. And we need to do it the way they used to do it. Okay? They came repenting. Okay? Uh, some people, it's like it's become it's become a tradition. Wow. They just stand here, wow. get in the water. Okay, we're going to take you down. You know, merge you in, in the water. Repent your sins in the name of Jesus. I only believe in the name and everything you do in word and in deed. Do it all in the name of Jesus. There's no other name by which a man can be saved but by the name of Jesus. If you've been baptized, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Father is a title. Son is a title. He said, give me the name. The name is singular. Single name. It didn't say names of. 
And, and actually, in the original Greek and Hebrew word, it doesn't even exist. At 5,000, the first transcripts of the Greek word, of 5,000 books uh, of the Greek word, it says, um, Go ye therefore unto all nations and uh, baptize and, and do all. And, Go ye therefore unto all nations and do whatever I have commanded thee. That's all that it says. It does not say Father, it does not say Son, it does not say Holy Ghost. But these are titles, and God, even though he allows Satan to get in and try and mess us up with the Word, the Bible says if you seek him, you'll find him. If you're not seeking him, if you're not looking for him, you're not going to find him. Okay? You're going to stop it uh, at Father and Son and Holy You're going to stop at titles, and Father is too great. Jesus is, that's why he's going to call upon his name, right? You can call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. He knows Lord means Savior, means God. It, Lord is Almighty. You can't call him. If he's not the Lord, then you can't call him the Lord. If he is not God, you can't bow down to him. You thou shalt bow down to no other gods, no, but no other gods before him. Amen? Hallelujah. He was the invisible God that was made visible. It's real simple. We are a monotheistic people. We are like the Jews. They believe one God. I believe one God. There's only one God. Amen? He is the Messiah. That's why Isaiah said, I'm oh, sorry to go there, but I have to go there. Isaiah in 53, he said, who's going to believe this report? To whom is that arm of the Lord been revealed? The arm. And then he begins to describe that arm. For he, shall, he shall go up as a tender root out of the dry ground. There's no form of comeliness that we would desire him. He was esteemed and stricken of men, smitten. And my goodness, this describing Jesus. And, and what's Isaiah saying? Ain't nobody going to believe that, Lord. Are you sure? <laughs> people for God to love the world that he gave his only begotten son that he gave son of God means the flesh of the anointed God the anointed flesh of God the son of God anointed flesh of God and just to wrap it all up for you for the word when you say God and the father and the son well what do you mean how could you put an and in between God and the father I thought God was the father how are they saying that in the scriptures that doesn't make sense of course, it does make sense when you understand that and. Write it down. It means Kai, God, and the Father. Kai, and means Kai, which is a Greek word, which means who even is, even is, who also is. God, who is the Father, who is the Son. God, even the Father, really. In the Hebrew word, you're going to see the word even. Every time you go into the Hebrew word, it's beautiful. It says even. E-V-E-N. And that meant even the Lord of hosts, even his Redeemer. Well, what do you mean God had a Redeemer? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So when we study this out, when we seek him, seek him hard. Make a commitment in your life to keep seeking him. Amen? Get up out of bed and make a commitment. You know, I make a new commitment. And I'm, I love to pray. And I'm a prayer warrior. And I pray all through the day. But I made a commitment of a, uh, a few months ago. Uh, that I would, every single day, I would take my head to the floor. Then I was, I, then I hide myself in my closet, and I have to because I got some cats, you know. And then I sit outside the door, what you doing in there? <laughs> hey, Mom. We run in the closet. It's like, you got a big place. Come on, give me a break. Let me out my closet. <laughs> For real, though. Okay? So you got that. Uh, God and the Father. Why would it say that? So, you know, that's going to... When I first came to Jesus, I spent at least four hours on my floor because the church tried to make me believe that the Father said this, Jesus said this, and the Holy Ghost said this. But you see, God has one voice. You have three different voices. He's got one head. He's the invisible God that was made visible. Hero Israel, the Lord thy God is one. If he said, here is the Lord, your God is three, then I'd have to say it. But the Bible says, if a man keep God's saying, if a man keep, Jesus said, if a man keep my sayings, that's how he said, he will not taste death. So I can't, so when I go out, I go out to win people, I got the word in my mouth. You can't move me. Because the Lord, I, I set the Lord like David, I set the Lord always before me because he's at my right hand, I cannot be moved. You cannot move me with your words because I got down on my own floor right. and I cried for four hours and begged Jesus to tell me who he was because if he was not God, I could not bow down to him. Right. If you are not the almighty God, like the scripture says, 
Now here um, it says in, in Isaiah chapter 9 and 6, unto us a son is born. We know there's nobody else that came to die for our sins. Unto us a child is given. The government's on his shoulder. The government, that, that's the one that forgave all my debt. I don't know what he's done for y'all. <laughs> but all you got to do is be faithful. Yes. The government is on his shoulder. Ain't no king ever going to get into the presidency unless God was. And God does it according to the people of God that are praying. Right. Amen? The best thing you can do is pray for Israel. Yeah. That's the best thing you can do. Yeah. Amen? That should be your most favorite prayer, to pray for Israel. The Lord loves his people. Yes, Amen? Right. First shall be last, the last shall be first. Yeah. But it's most important yeah. that you get on your hands. And so I found myself as a child of God. Uh, and, and I got on my hands and knees and I begged God to tell Jesus to tell me because if he was not God I could not worship him because I didn't know anybody but Jesus right. and so when they said uh, Jesus said this, the Father said this and the Holy Ghost said this, I was like oh my God, who are these other guys? <laughs> you know, I knew Jesus Amen. and so I got on my floor open up to Isaiah 44 we're going here but Trust me, we're going somewhere else. I hope you ain't got no word, what, nothing to do for the next what, what? Till morning at least. Okay, Isaiah, right? Isaiah. Go to Isaiah. You got your Bible, right? Bible check. Never ever walk into the house of God without your book. Okay? If you love him. If you're seeking him. It shows me that you're seeking him. Thank you, Jesus. It shows God that you're seeking Forget me. It shows God that you're seeking him. Praise the Lord. And God loves to be soft. I am soft of them. <coughs> we weren't looking. Okay. Isaiah 44 and 6. It says, Thus says the Lord. Now, when I when cried out to the Lord, the Lord told me, the story goes like this, and I told you, Pastor. The story goes like this. I'm crying out to Jesus. I'm, I'm banging the floor. I'm screaming out to him. And I want to know who you are. This is the one I've known all my life. I got to know who you are. I'm not crying for nobody else. I'm crying to him. I'm not crying for money. I'm not crying to get back into a new film. I'm not crying to go back to Egypt. I'm not crying for... And I didn't have any money. I was crying for Jesus to tell me. Because if he wasn't, then you know what? I might just cut out here. Because if he's not God, I'm in trouble. Then I really don't... You know, because I, I believe that I have found him. And he wasn't lost, right? Is the, right? I was sincerely lost, right? But so I'm crying out to him, and he tells me after four hours of being on the floor, and I'm pounding the floor, I'm crying. My eyes are like like frogs' eyes; they're like bloated, okay? And I and and I remember Jesus saying, um, "Open your Bible." My Bible was sitting there, and I had all these books, men's books. Uh, they, they, you know, when Vanity got saved, uh, <coughs> thank you, Jesus. When she got saved, when that woman, that woman, when that woman first got saved, thank you, Jesus. The, um, the, all the people, all the wise men of the world sent me books. All the writers. They wanted me to really get saved, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> like, we're going to give her something to do. <laughs> Read a book. And it was their book. And so my Bible was sitting there, and Jesus said, open up your, your book. Open up your Bible. And so I opened the Bible, and I was wiping my eyes open. Oh, I really was dumbfounded. And, and Jesus, I heard the Lord say, I heard the Lord say this. He said, who cries for truth? We cry for our boyfriends, girlfriends, husbands. I don't believe in boyfriends. Mm -mm, I believe in husbands. Amen. I believe you, you know, you got a you got a man. If you ain't married, you need to be on that side of the church. You need to watch him. What you doing? I got to see you. Are you praising God? You know what I'm saying? What you doing? I gotta see you praying. Because if your man, if your man, which is not your man, if he is praying and he is faithful to God, he could be a very good, faithful husband. And the woman too. If she's trying to keep where she comes. <laughs> I'm trying to get everybody's attention. It's cute. You know what I'm saying? 
Look like you're dizzy being and you're gonna fall off like that. Right? <laughs> He's trying to be cute, you know what I'm saying? Cute in church. I don't know cute in church, boy. They slapped that silly right off of me, I'm telling you, when I came to the church. <laughs> there, goes the, there goes the cute. You thought you were cute, huh, man? Oh, man. They, 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 they took me out. God put me in one of those churches, you know? Whatever. Who? We don't know you. <laughs> no, we do not. We do not remember my pastor's up. Okay. This is the rules. When you come in this house, because they had prayed honestly, they have this is honest God too. They, they told me when I first got, they first let me preach. They had been telling me that the Lord had let me go out, you know, and several years later after I was just engrossed in the word. And, and <laughs> Sister Harper said she got up and she started crying because I finished preaching. She was like, oh, because I would never, I, it, you know, they got so much word in them. So I was like so nervous that I, I'm not nervous, trust me. But in my own church, oh, you know, I said, like, dare I say something wrong, right? <laughs> That's how you feel, right? So they said to me, they said, they stood before and told the whole church, okay, when she first came here, we got down on our hands, we were home, got down on our hands and knees and prayed that God would take her out of our church and put her in somewhere else. <laughs> I said, oh, Lord, please take her out of this church. She's going to kill our church. She's going to ruin our church. Oh, and they prayed right together. <laughs> Who knew, right? Like, I thought I was okay. <laughs> oh, this isn't the one way? <laughs> For real. Anyhow, thank you, Jesus. Oh, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord. So, anyhow, so I'm, um, they said, but what happened was after we finished praying, they said they both got the same answer. They said, they, Jesus said, Jesus answered them both with this exactly the same thing. It, it is a miracle. Jesus says, she, Denise belongs to me. Hallelujah. They said, Jesus said, Denise belongs to me. Wow, you know, that was a that was, that was big to me, especially coming from a family that is not your family or doesn't doesn't love you or doesn't show you love. Especially coming from that, you know, Jesus just saying that in there. And, you know, I love my pastors, Pastor Willie and Roxanne Harper. I belong to Jesus Christ for all nations. We are the JC fans. We are the JC fanatics. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's like a like at least uh, maybe 200 of us like this. <laughs> All up in your face. <laughs> like, you know, my pastor said he wishes he could get like at least a hundred of me. Just because I was that, like, you know, a little crazy. Thank you, Jesus. But you know, the Lord, he doesn't take away your personality. He just enhances it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um, we are in 2013. Amen. I, I, when you read the word, this is, see, when I read the word, I get excited. It, it, it's overjoying for me. Now, I have been through some serious, solid suffering in my life, okay? And, 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 and the Lord has forgiven my debts. And that's who faithful. A faithful man will abound with blessings. That's a promise. And so if you are sitting, but Jesus, and, and Jesus had given me this word before I came to tell you. He said, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. But you gotta seek for yourself. Yes. You gotta ask for yourself. Right. Too many have been asking at the wrong time when you know it's like you you be asking stuff that God didn't call you to even have. Amen. But ask according to his will. Thy will be done. That's just the whole prayer. We we do prayer every morning at 6 a.m. in the morning. 6 a.m. in the morning on church. 6 a.m. in the morning, and I, I have to get up at 5 o'clock. Thank you, Jesus, because I'm the prayer pastor for um, Friday. Amen? We go into the secret place, and we teach people how to pray, and we pray for a solid hour. We want to do that. Thank you, Jesus, and we pray for a solid hour. Monday through Friday, Saturday and Sunday on your own. Thank you, Jesus. But <laughs> Hallelujah. But, um, and then we take requests for people. And, and, and in our church, we've had serious miracles. There should be miracles. Yes. Yes. Everywhere you walk, people should be coming. People come to me and they go, Denise, you prayed for me last month. I had serious arthritis. You remember? No, I don't remember that. I said, yeah, I got healed. Jesus healed me. I'm like, cool. Go tell everybody. Go tell everybody Jesus healed you. Amen. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. But it, it, it's beautiful to come. It, 
any of those things. And, and uh, the Lord has uh, blessed me to lay hands on people that have been healed from cancer. We have, we've had like, um, I think, eight people get healed completely of cancer. Jesus said, signs and miracles and wonders follow you. If you have a ministry, then your ministry should be filled with signs, miracles, and wonders. Amen? That's what it's all about. He said, they follow you for the signs, miracles, and wonders. And so if you're not busy praying for them, you can't get by me. If I see you, you look poor, I'm going to talk to you. I'm coming to talk to you. You look hungry, I'm going to feed you. I eat everything under the sun. I fed a cockroach once. I can't. I kid you not, I was in the house, I was in Hawaii, I was preaching, and they got cockroaches there, you know, and they're big, little monsters running around, and you open up like, and they scream, right, and I'm like, oh, cockroaches, and I can't kill bugs that are big, I can't kill little ones, the Lord has made my heart so soft, I can't, I, I get a bug, I catch a, a bug, a spider. Okay, I have a plan. I put a plan together. How to get you down. How to put you in a glass. How to hold you together. Okay, go live. Live. I can't, you know, I just, I don't care how it's a little tiny spider. I can't kill them. I just can't. Okay? And I don't get legions of junk in them. The only demons that were legions in my house was me. I was the demon of the legions. Okay? Now, once that was out, I just, you know, God didn't. Anyhow, that's just me. You know, I just, this poor little thing, you want to live, don't you? <laughs> I started talking to him. So here's this cockroach. He said, you can't live with me in here. <laughs> and so I tell Jesus, okay, this is my story. It's okay, this is my story. It's okay, so you guys are all trying to get up and tell your own stories. But he, I got this cockroach, and I, he's like become a partner in the house, you know? And so the Lord told me, just leave some food for him outside. And so I did. I put the food on the side. And I showed him where it was. I said, see? See? Put the food down there. And then the next day I opened up the door. He's got all his little friends and his little family. <laughs> I know, the, the wonderful thing about God, the miracle of God, when God tells you to do something, because he knows my spirit, I cannot kill the cockroach. Lord, you know I ain't going to kill that cockroach. I ain't going to sacrifice him for nobody. Okay. He ain't shooting out no blood for nothing. Okay, so... I'm not sacrifice. I'm not going to kill the cockroach. And the Lord will tell you what to do. You know, he's got an answer for everything. Put them outside. Show them outside that there's food. I don't know where this is going. But anyways, maybe you need to stop killing stuff. You know, we have this killing spirit, you know? You got to kill the spirit. Come on. Come on. People of God. You know, let the world keep killing, you know? But why would you have a killing spirit when you can just, oh, you know? You know, the bug is like, You know what I'm saying? This is the truth. Even in the Old Testament, God said he didn't like violence. <laughs> he said he didn't like a man that loved violence, you know? It's like, that little thing can't hurt. Uh, come on. You know what? Here's the thing. When you come to the Lord, the Lord, when, you, when we see Jesus, he's going to be looking for fruit. Fruit of the Spirit. You're going to be judged by the fruit. Where's your loving kindness? Where's your gentleness? Where's your meekness? Where's your temperance? Where's your love? I was a witch when I came to Jesus. I was a witch. I had a witch in me. And I was a witch. I'll tell you what to do, where to go, and where to put. I was. I was bad. Oh, boy, God had a time with me. You know, because I was the vanity. You know? I had big, big men cry. That's not good. Right? Some of y'all doing that right now. <laughs> yeah. All right now. Time to get straight, huh? Right? You love your... Husbands love your wife. Wives obey your husbands. How many are married up in here? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, I want you to stand up. Mary folks, stand up. Okay, I want you to hug each other. Really hug each other. And tell your wife you love her. And you're not letting her go. For the rest of your life, she belongs to you. See, that's better than a movie. Right? That's better than a movie. Right there. I love to see God's people. Now, wait a minute, stop. Now, I want you to... 
wait a minute, wait. I want you to get on the piano. We're gonna do, we're gonna do something different today. I want you to play something romantic. Hey, something romantic in Jesus. Come on, Jesus, he made romance. You should be able to play something romantic, right? Up. Dance with your husband, honey. Play. Oh yeah. When's the last time you did this? Come on, you guys. Come out in the in the, in the aisle. We all want to see you dance. Don't you want to see you dance? Go ahead, dance. Dance. Yeah. There you go. This man never danced before in his life, right? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. See, uh, how beautiful. Now just. Tell them how much you love me, sweetie. Say, I love you, sweetie, 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 baby. You're my sweetie, 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 baby. See, now this is what you get to look forward to. Amen? Now, whenever you get mad, this is the position that you get to take. Whenever you get mad, grab his hand and say, honey, I love you, my sweetie, 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 baby. I say that to my cat all the time, and Jesus said, why don't you say that to you know, your friends. I said, okay, I started saying this straight as hell, oh, sweet, 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 baby. <laughs> and they said, oh, aren't you just so sweet? Aw, <laughs> oh, look at them. Aren't they beautiful? Thank you, Jesus. Professing their love for each other. Have you professed your love for your husband? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Y'all get him sit down. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, give him a big hand clap. You are obedient to the Lord. Jesus wants to see more love. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I know I want you to go to that Isaiah 46 and that 144 where it says, that's, this is the word that when I opened up my Bible, I was on the floor and I was crying out to Jesus and who he was. And when I, he told me to point, he said, who cries, cries for truth? And then he told me to point in the Bible. I had no idea where I was pointing. I just pointed in the Bible. I was a brand new baby in Jesus, okay? And underneath my finger, he said, now read what's under your finger. Now, I knew this was Jesus talking to me because I was only talking to Jesus. And underneath it, the Lord Jesus said, thus says the Lord, the King of Israel and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first, I am the last, and beside me there's no God. Now, all through the book of Isaiah, if you study it out, you'll see, beside me there's no God. God, he said, there's never going to, not only did he say there's no God, but he said, there's never going to be another God. Amen. Now, either Jesus and you believe that he's God, and you believe the Messiah is God. He said, he said he, and, and I think it was in verse, in chapter 60, where he said, I sent my own arm to save you. Ah, what did Isaiah say? Who believed this report, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Revealed. Now, if you're seeking them, Jesus will reveal it. But if you stop seeking them, he'll stop talking. If you stop seeking them, he'll stop talking. Okay, this is a relationship with God. That's why Jesus, he tore the veil for, for us. This is a relationship. We get to go into the most holy place. We are blessed. You don't have to be standing and, and, and in a certain uh, form of attire to get into the holy place. You could have a uh, filthy garment because the garment that God has to see is the garment, the one that went in and got washed. Amen. That's your soul. Amen. Amen. Your soul Amen. must be adopted. We must be adopted into the family and we can only do that through Christ. Amen. Right? Yes. You can only do that through Christ. Amen. And we love Christ. Yes. And so yeah, that's what he said. Beside there's no God. He said, but there's another one, hopefully. I mean, let me find it. Maybe you know it, where it says, uh, I am the Lord, the Savior, and the Redeemer, the Mighty One, one of Jacob. He says, my righteousness is near, my salvation has gone forth. And he said, this is God speaking. He was just waiting for you to find him. And if you believe him, he that believe it. He that believe it. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him, he gave his only begotten son. That's the flesh. The son of God means the, the anointed flesh of God. That's my flesh. That's me. That, hey, God is like this. Give me a piece of paper. Anybody got a piece of paper? Piece of paper, piece of paper. 
Oh, world's got me saver. Thank you. Okay, this, let's say this is God. Let me get a pen. There's a pen over there. I saw a pen. It was sitting on the table. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so this is God. Let's say this is God. This is how the Lord gave it to me to explain. <coughs> this is God. Okay. And then Jesus came from the sea of God. We know that. It even talks about it in the Old Testament. So, we didn't come from God like that. I want to I was uh, born in iniquity and shaped in iniquity and born in sin and shaped in iniquity. You all know that. Boy, right. well, yeah. All right. And, and I had to be washed. Amen. Amen. And I had to be adopted. Yes. Baptized. Yes. Amen. And so, but Jesus, that was the seed. That was the Holy Ghost seed. That was God. God always was the Holy Ghost. I wasn't any other God. Yes. Okay. God was the holiest ghost. I am the Holy Ghost. Okay, so now this being Jesus, let's take Jesus out there. This, this is so. This would be Jesus. He came from God. You can't take anything out of God and it not be God. You understand that? It's an impossibility. That's what layman's terms. And so this only made because I was like, Lord, let me give me wisdom. I don't know if you pray for wisdom. But I don't have wisdom. I mean, if my name means wise to you, you better give me some wisdom, Lord. I need wisdom. Because I deal with I deal with the type of people, hey sweetheart, I deal with the, the type of God said, go into your own like kind. I deal with the I minister to the whoremongers and the liars and the cheaters and the backstabbers and the alphabet people and the gays and the straights and you name it, uh, the transvestites. That's the kind of people that God places in my path. And those are the type of people that I have to talk to. And some of them have started off in Christ and left Christ or been with Christ and left Christ. Whatever. And so this is Jesus. Now, here's Jesus coming to the earth. Oh, there goes Jesus. Oh, no, there he goes. He's fine. There he goes. Okay, pick him up. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so we got Jesus. <laughs> yeah, hallelujah. Yeah, what wow. and, so, and so when he went back up to heaven, all he did was this. I will be in the Father. The Father is in me. And on that day, you'll know that I'm in the Father, the Father's in me, and I'm in you. That's as simple as it is. It's not that I, Jesus said even the baby could understand it. All right, that's how he gave it. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Even Jesus, too, Jesus said, he said it, he said it so well. He said, I told David, sit, come sit at my right hand while, until I make your enemies my footstool. He said, before Abraham was, I am. All right, then I'm like, oh, you good, Lord, you good. <laughs> you got the word. <laughs> Hallelujah, he's got the word. He always had a good word. Then have to go off and think about that one. Well, you ain't about 50 years old. How you gonna be in Ab How you gonna be before Abraham? Before Abraham was, I am, I am, I am. Oh man, if you seek him, you'll find him, and you'll find him, and you'll find him, and you can't. You, you can never see, seek him so hard that you, oh my God, and every time, I mean, if you're looking, you'll find it. Yeah. And so when the Lord told me, when Jesus told me that he was God, that there beside him there was no other God, it, you could never take that from me now. Let me put my hand on my head and get it. But like the attitude. <laughs> Sorry, bro. It ain't going to happen. You can't just say any kind of old thing. You can't just say any kind of old form of doctrine. I'm not, I'm not, because I sacrificed the time and spilled the tears on my Bible, crying out for truth. Amen. Now, certain people, they'll cry for all kinds of things, right? Cry for a million dollars. Don't know what to do with a million dollars if you got it. But crying for it, you know, and crying to get married. I remember I went to Sister Harper. I said, Sister Harper, I don't believe that. I don't believe that Jesus has any bad for me. <laughs> and, and, and I don't think that he wants me to get married. I think he wants me all to himself. And she said, oh, please. <laughs> said, why don't you try, why don't you grow up and fall in love with Jesus for real? I was like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> You know, that hurt, boy, that hurt. That's some of those lies you never forget. It was like when I was a fornicator. Okay, I'll use you. Come sit here. 
He doesn't keep you out of fornication, I'm sure. <laughs> Jesus comes in here. So, it's, it, and it was in the front row because, you know, I sat in the front row, I can't see, right? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. There you go. Sweetheart, can you get up? Thank you, darling. Thank you, darling. Hallelujah. You need to get up and sit up in the chair and come and listen because you know what? In the days of Jesus, even all the children sat and listened to the Jesus stories, right? You can't be crawling on the ground looking for dust, bro. <laughs> okay? All right. I want you to sit up and listen because you got a brain, right? You got ears, right? You can hear. Thank you, Jesus. What you teaching the children in the house? Thank you, Jesus. Are you praying over them? I know you are, Mama. You singing them to them, aren't you? You singing them, right? <laughs> I bet you they all got beautiful voices like you. Okay, so I this would be me, and I'm in the front row, and um, Sister Harper, because she's she's the prophet in our house, and she prophesied, and I never heard a false word, and, and um, so she's like. She basically walked up to me like this. She says, you know, there'll be like some fornication going on in the house. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, man. I was really young. I was really young, probably. But that would take you out of fornication. You understand? Hello? That would take you and keep you out of fornication when the prophet opens up her mouth and speaks. Oh my God, she was like, she was like, she wrote the number on the wall, you know? I'll tell you where you just did it. That's not fun. Okay? But that's what that's that's the house I grew up in. You're gonna get ripped. You gonna it's gonna rip out of you. You're gonna so she says, Oh please, give me a break. Why don't you try falling in love with Jesus? Grow up and fall in love with Jesus for real. I was like, golly, that was not what I was expecting. I was making her feel sorry for me. Everybody's married but me, you know? <laughs> but she was not feeling sorry for me, not one little bit. And so I went home, saints, for real. And I got on my hands and knees and I cried out to Jesus. And I said, Lord, okay, I want to fall in love with you for real. How many really want to do that for real? For real. And all it takes is saying, you could be married, right? You could be married, but you want you want to do it for real. You, you want this thing for real. Like nothing else matters. It's just, uh, and when you're married, it's good to love your husband. You, you've got to obey your husband. Because you know what? It's not going to kill you. If he tells you to, you know, make dinner and you just finish working a 12-hour day, yeah, just go do it. He gives power to the faith, them that have no might, he increases the strength. And you just keep speaking that. Oh, yes, darling, I can make you dinner. He gives power to the faith, and them that have no might, he increases the strength. Yes, sweetheart, I can make you dinner. You know, we like, some of y'all are like, hey, you see the fridge, what's your problem? You don't see the fridge. You don't see a fridge that's big and it's white, and it opens and closes, and open, open, close, open. You know, you don't see that? I forgot the cameras are, oh my gosh. Okay. But anyhow, the key is to fall in love for real. Okay, I'm sorry. I, you know, I, I, and when I'm in church, my pastors are very funny too. And, and I like, I like to see people laugh. This is a great, holy, perfect word. It's for everyone, and we need to start enjoying ourselves in Jesus. And I tell you, the most joy that I get is when I tell somebody about the Lord. When I go out to give them away and to, and, and to tell people, listen, Jesus loves you so much. And I don't care what, what you, you could say hello and I say, you know Jesus loves you. Did you know that? And when I say it, I say it with authority in God because I believe it. You're only going to say without what you believe. Amen? Okay. When I was in love with Prince, I'm like, yeah, I'm in love with the boy. Now, I'm not in love with the boy. I'm not in love. I found the Prince of Peace. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I have found my Prince. I have found my God. I have found my Lord. I have found the one that loves my soul. Yes. And so I decided I was going to delight myself with him. Okay. Now, I, I, I know I'm, I've got to wrap it up, right? Because I could go on. You know. How many got, you guys, you got somewhere to go? I'd like to go to the beach. Would you like to go to the beach with me? Can we all meet at the beach tonight? Yeah? 
<laughs> he said, yeah, put your hand up. You want to be in the beach tonight? Oh, man, we're in Florida. Everybody ready for food, huh? Food. People love food. They love to eat. <laughs> Who doesn't love to eat, right? Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so um, we got to deal with a couple of scriptures here. Praise God. Okay, God will give me a couple of things. I want you to turn the book of Revelation. Okay, we want to fall in love with Jesus for real. Okay, and that seems to be a really good word for tonight. That that's, there's, there's that for real. Amen. And to really be in love, if, if when you had a boyfriend, when you when your husband was your boyfriend, right? Y'all know when your husband was your man, right? You bring around calling up your girlfriend, tell him, "Wow, oh, he's so cool. He's so good. He's so nice. He's so sweet. And he's oh, he hasn't got a beard, but I can picture him in the beard. Now he's got a beard." <laughs> so well, what what I'm trying to say is, when you fell in love with your wife, or when you called up people, and you talked to them, and you. You just described your love. Yes. Well, that's that's kind of that's not kind of that's it's even more intriguing Amen. with the Lord because yes. He's got so He does way more than your husband, yes. right? Amen. right? Amen. God is a miracle worker. Hey, I mean, I'm standing before you. I have three days to live. Yes. God gave me eyes like I said. I don't have really, you know, perfect eyes, but I can see. You're not falling asleep. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, young man of God. How are you going to preach one day? Maybe. Not really. <laughs> Maybe. You don't know. You didn't ask Jesus yet? Okay, ask him right now. Ask him right now. Close your eyes. Ask him right now. Am I going to preach? Okay, now. What are you doing? That's what I'm talking. There you go. You're going to preach. Right? That's all you that's, that's, that's exactly what, you know, the saints need to do. I get so many calls from kids that they say, well, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Even soldiers of the Lord, the saints, I don't know what I'm supposed to do in God. I just close your eyes and ask him. You know? He's going to tell you. To open up your mouth and talk about him. He ain't want to talk about nobody else, really. <laughs> you know, God is great. You know, ego means edging God out. And God is there. Everybody else is talking about himself. And God is so great that the Ark of the Covenant, for instance, the Lord bless me with this uh, revelation. The Ark of the Covenant in the Old Testament, God hid himself in the Ark of the Covenant. But now God puts himself inside a man. This is wild. And then he speaks in another one time, okay? back to all my stories. That's God. That the guy. He brings all things back to remembrance. Amen. So, I, so I'm standing there. I'm getting saved. Okay. And and and, and uh, the, the lady says, she says, do you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost? I'm like, yeah. I don't know nothing about the Holy Ghost. I don't even know the word the Holy Ghost. I ain't never heard of the word the Holy Ghost. But it just sounds holy. So she asked me if I want it. I'm like, yeah. Why well, would I don't want it, right? Somebody asked you, you want the Holy Ghost? Yeah. What am I going to do? And so they said, stand up, and they come over, and they're, they're praying for me, right? And, and, and they're, they're, they're praying, and they're praying, and they're praying, and they're praying, right? And they're going on and on in prayer, and, and these holy languages, and I'm thinking it's fire. Thank you, Jesus. You should have more fire. Can you imagine? Get more God, get more fire. You know, I'm like, no sense. Yeah, I got God. I go to church. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> Yeah, meet me there. Come have a great time. Yes. People today, oh Lord God, where's your fire? Goodness knows. Okay, so anyways, thank you, Jesus. So I'm standing there and I'm crying and I'm wailing and, and they're speaking in these unknown tongues. I don't know that they're unknown tongues. I think that there's a language and I'm here's what I'm thinking to myself. I'm like, ah, oh, wish I could talk in a different language. Hmm, wonder how long that takes to learn that 
Yeah. Yeah. Wow, it sounds so cool. Boy, I guess that's what we have to do when we come to learn languages. Okay. I'm, that's where my mind's going, okay? Because I'm a baby. I'm like, I know nothing. Gaga, goo goo. Nothing, okay? Everything I knew that Jesus loved the little children, all the children in the world, red and yellow, black and white. I fit in there somewhere. That's all I know. And so I'm sitting in the least thinking all this stuff. And she says, do you want the Holy Ghost? I said, yeah. You know, like I'm thinking to myself, didn't she get it? I told her I wanted the Holy Ghost. <laughs> but she's thinking, I know what the Holy Ghost is. But I don't know. She says, okay, you know, the Holy Ghost, you can speak. To them. They're all praying. And the Holy Ghost, and then she says, well, you can, you can talk like, we, like we're talking. And I remember the babies. I was like, okay. So I try and mimic her. She's like, no, no, don't do that. Like that. Like, obviously, she learned something crazy at the time. And so you know, I says, okay. She says, no, just, just, uh, just open up your mouth, and, and God will fill it. God will, God will speak through you. I said, okay. I'm like, oh. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, okay? No, they're busy praying. I like that. I'm waiting. And she said, I, I closed my mouth and I said, I don't think Jesus wants me. I, I think I'm too bad. I really believe, you know, because I was vanity. I don't think he loves me. I don't think he wants me. That's why I, I don't think he wants me. I, I'm so I, I'm, I've been so bad. And she said, "Oh no, Jesus wants you. She, Jesus loves you. Just open up." He's still with a child. Huh? He said, "Jesus loves you. Jesus wants you. Just open up your mouth." I said, "Okay, okay." <laughs> <laughs> and I just started speaking in tongues. <laughs> And I spoke in eight different languages before I left that house. Eight different languages. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's another one. Oh my gosh, there's another one. Oh my gosh. You know, I believe that the Lord filled me with the Holy Ghost because I had such a foul mouth. God had, the Bible says, the scripture says, the, the tongue is a world of iniquity. It's, a, it's set on fire, the course of action. action take, it's going to take it to hell. And so you, you can take yourself to hell. You can take yourself to hell. You have to decide, and and and, and you gotta decide. You know, if, if you're if you're messed up today in any kind of way, I don't care if you're smoking, drinking, whatever. If you're doing the the bad, bad. Um, if if you just bowed your head and said, Lord God, I don't like who I am. Man, I prayed that prayer. I don't like who I am. I don't like I don't like this man. I'm supposed to be a new creature. God, I need you to do something. I wailed uh, for 10 years solid for God to do, to take junk out of me. Oh, yes. You know, I'm not screaming at him anymore. Amen? Because I live in that place. And I, there's, a, there's a book of Psalm 37. It says, fret not thyself against the evil workers of iniquity. Let me just preach it to you. Fret not thyself. When you come to Jesus, you spend a lot of time fretting. You're still angry. You still got a foul mouth. If you're living there, come on. The scripture says, trust in the Lord and do good. So move from the fret. If you're still fretting and, and you're still fretting on things, you're still complaining about your job, you're still complaining about your people. Well, then if you're complaining about the people on your job, you need to go and minister to them and tell them that you love them and return the love for evil. Return love for evil. I'm telling you, it works. It works like nothing else. I'm telling you that works. I had a woman that cussed me out of the phone. I was calling her back. And she cussed me out, and she she cussed me out, and so as soon as she hung up the phone on me, and I didn't know this person was, so I called her back. You know, how many of them call her back? I call her back. She's like, didn't I tell you? She, you're speaking in, in some kind of unknown tongue, but it was not God's. I can tell you that. Now the Lord puts the Holy Ghost inside you, so He can pray through you. He said, after you get the Holy Ghost, you're going to receive power. Everywhere that you see in the Bible, you're going to see power. You're going to see the Holy Ghost. Jesus is going to speak. That's the supernatural power that we got that no other religion in the world has. Don't nobody have that. When you got the Holy Ghost, that says, marvel not that they say you must be born again. The wind blows where thou hearest the sound thereof. Sound means phone in. Write it down in your scriptures. That marvel not. John chapter 3, I believe it's the word, uh, verse 5. You can't see the kingdom of heaven. You can't enter the kingdom of heaven. You ain't getting in unless you have been 
been baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. It ain't gonna happen. I don't, he said, he says he gives it to them that uh, obey him. Huh, hello? And when you make up your mind, now he gave it to me because he knew this girl had repented and made up her mind. I got filled with the Holy Ghost before I got baptized in the name of Jesus. All right. God didn't say which one you had to get first. Amen. You get filled when he said baptized. Water baptism, water means, born again means again, a second time. So let's go back to this. Marvel not that I say you must be born again. That's John chapter 3 if you want to write it down. And if you come tomorrow, bring a pen and a paper and your Bible. Amen. Amen. This should, it's, it's like, this is everything. Your Bible is everything. Amen. The word is everything. And then putting it inside you, then that's everything. Amen. So marvel not that I say you must be born again, Jesus said. The, this is a revelation. The wind blows. <sighs> Where thou hearest, and thou hearest the sound. Sound means phone, which means voice. This is Greek. Sound means phone, which means voice. Thou hearest the sound thereof. You don't know where it's coming? You don't know where it's going. So is everyone born in the spirit? How many people are born in the spirit? Everyone, when they hear a what? A voice. Okay, now here's the voice again. Suddenly there came a sound. Suddenly there came a voice right. from heaven. And it filled all the house tops where they were sitting. sitting and there appeared in them clothing tongues like fire. <laughs> like fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost as the Spirit gave them utterance. God does a supernatural. When God gives a gift, He don't give you something. Open up your hand. He don't put something. He don't go like this. And there ain't nothing there. When you get the gift of, um, what's it a gift? That's a gift. Uh, uh, prophecy. If you don't, if, if, if somebody comes and says you have to get a prophecy and you say yes, and, and then you don't never prophesy, I can't, you can't tell me you're a prophet. <laughs> you, there you go. Exactly. And that's how I explain to the lost when, I, when they say, how do you believe the Bible is true? I say, if you read it, You'll find that all the prophets, everything they said from God. I said the book was not written by men. The book was written by God. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was God. The Word wasn't man. The Word was God. Yes. Ah. Some of us have, have forgotten how to answer that question. God wrote that book. Amen. Dare anybody tell you you did. Amen. Just bring it to the book and show it. Amen. And so everything that God said came true. Everything right now over in Israel, everything is coming true. Everything in Egypt is coming true. Everything in Gaza is coming true. Everyone in Jerusalem coming true. Everything, every war that God ever said, 3,000 are going to die today. You can bet your bottom dollar, 3,000 died that day in the war. Everything that God, so who wrote it? Who came out with the alphabet? Did we? We don't have that much sense. We can't even make a C, can we? It's like that little joke I told last night. Okay, I got a joke. <laughs> okay, okay, I, let me say my joke. Can I tell my joke? Okay, let's pause. <laughs> pause. <laughs> okay, so this is this man. And you know how Jesus, he walked on the water? It was a beautiful thing. But some people don't believe it, right? And then Peter, he got in, he walked on the water and fell, right? So you got this man, he's a hunter, and he's going out and he's going to hunt himself some ducks. Thank <laughs> you, Jesus. If we going to duck hunting. And they've been duck hunting up here. <laughs> so he gets him, he goes out with his dog. And he gets his dog and they go to hunt dog and they go duck hunting. And so you know how to shoot a gun? Who knows how to shoot a gun? Like, I know y'all know how to Okay, so you put the gun up, right? Go ahead. Show us how you shoot the gun. Okay, so you see a duck. Okay, cock it, okay, shoot the duck. Duck falls down to the ground, and the dog runs across the water, he does not swim. He runs across the water, grabs the duck, bring, runs across the water, brings it back to his master, and drops it at his feet. Well, the master is just, he is blown away, and he cannot believe. Did I tell you this? Did I tell you this joke? No, no, no. Oh, goody, goody, goody. Okay, so here's the duck laying in his mouth, he cannot believe it. He said, oh my God, let's try this again. He, Cocks the gun, shoots the duck. You make the sound, at least make the sound. <laughs> there you go. Shoots the duck, duck falls down to the water, and the dog runs across 
across the water, fetches the duck, runs back and plops it at his master's feet. It is a wonderful day. And so, thank you, Jesus. So he goes home. He can't believe what he just seen. He goes to, he goes to get his, uh, his friend because he wants to show off his dog that runs across the water. And we don't know. There may be a dog out there that can do this. Anyway, so he goes to get his friend. He's saying, I'll show you what my dog can do. He said, come, dunk, duck hunting with me tomorrow. And so he takes him out duck hunting. And he shoots. Gotta give me some sound, bro. Give me some sound. We got a few guns. Boom. Give me some sound, bro. Give me some yeah. There you go. He shoots. The duck duck falls on the water, runs across the water, slap duck. The duck and drops on his master's feet. Now his master's like, wow. That was incredible. He said, oh, let's do this again. And the, and the, the guy's standing there. He's like, his arm was like looking at the duck. And what happens? He sees another duck, he boom, shoots the duck. Dog runs across the water, grabs the duck, runs back, plops it at the man's feet. And he said, what do you think about that? Did you see what my dog did? Did you see that? He said, yeah. Hello? He said, He said, oh my God, this is what he said. He said, yo, bro, I don't think your dog can swim. <laughs> I listen to the preachers. I love to listen to preachers. I, I love to listen to your pastor preach but just a little bit. And I love to listen. You're a pastor, right? You're a pastor. You're a pastor? Evangelist? I'm a prophet. Prophet? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says that, that we need to pray for prophetic. We need to pray for the prophecy. So when God gives you a prophet, when you're a prophet, like this man is a prophet, when God gives you the gift, you're going to prophesy. Amen. Amen. And people are going to, uh, you know, it's places I've been all over the world that people will go, the pastors will say, You're, you, I don't call myself a prophet. I prophesy. But I know I'm an evangelist and I know I have gifts of, you know, of the spirit. But the pastors always call me a prophet. But I've never, you know, I, I don't believe I have the office of the prophet. Like, he has the office of the prophet, right? I prophesy, you know. Hallelujah. And I have that gift. And that's because I asked the Lord for it. So whenever God gives you a gift, God gives a manifestation. Right? Your prophet, your prophet, is a prophecy, it's going to come true. Amen? That's how it works. Your false prophet, <laughs> I can't call you, but then just, just stuff ain't coming. You need to sit down. Give it a rest. You know, get close. Amen. Get some power. The Bible said, after you have the Holy Ghost, you shall receive power. To cast out devils, do cures, lay hands on the sick. Come on. There's some power in the words you're speaking. And so, and then what's the other gifts? Name some gifts. Apostle. Teacher. Uh, apostle. Apostle. The spiritual gifts. Uh, interpretation of tongues. Okay. So if you have an interpretation. Word of wisdom. Do you not going to be stupid? Right. You know, it, 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 the, the thing, the bottom line is, whenever God gave a gift, including the Holy Ghost, something came with it. That's right. Okay? Now, the word is full of spirit. It is spirit and it is life. Yes. But God said he wants the overflowing. Thank you. The overflowing. Yes. And that overflowing is when God comes inside, you'll know that he's inside. And he will speak in an unknown language or a known language. And he will do this. This is supernatural power. And the reason he does it is because that is like I'm allowing God to pray yes. for the things that I really need. Because you can be like, oh, Lord, give me that man. I want that man. I know he's mine. Yeah. Well, God, I'm going mean, you know that man does not belong to you. That man belongs to the woman down the street. You know, whatever God gives 
you the understanding. And that's why it's so important to speak in tongues. I spoke in tongues most of the day today. It's mostly because I want to know what I'm going to say today. Thank you, Jesus. Apart from telling you the funny joke that was funny. Thank you, Jesus. But Revelation, let, let's, let's get down to business here. Because, you know, Jesus doesn't make a mistake when he comes to speak his word. And, and I know you'll learn tonight that I live in the fullness of joy, saints. And, and I've had 21 surgeries. I've been cut open in all parts of my body. And they've even taken liberty to cut me open when they had no business cutting me open. It, it, it's, you know, Satan is, is real. But, and I thank the Lord because I was supposed to be dead many times. God did not let me die. They said, this woman's going to die. She's not going to get up from this. And, I, and, and, and as you're saying, I'm like, no, I'm not. Don't listen to him. Trust me. Uh, no, I got so much work to do. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God, uh, you know, if I was out there playing around and being, what do they call them today? A player or whatever. You know, and God, and I wouldn't do God business. But that's all I know how to do. I don't know everything else in life. I'm a dummy. I don't have a, my tel a television. I don't have television. I haven't had television probably for seven, eight, I don't know, maybe longer years. I have Netflix, and, and I can choose if I want to watch that. And I, I like stuff like black and white. I'm old. Thank you, Jesus. I'm as old as the hills. I don't like anything I'm going to see. I don't want to watch cussing. I want to put that stuff in my brain. I don't want to watch pornography. I, I just did that in the world. I, you know, I looked at that. and Yeah, it's... And our children are growing up in this. you got to be careful. Don't just sit your children in front of the television. That's why I said Satan is the principality, the power of his air. He is ruling. You know, if God was going to rule this earth, he would, God rules his people that want to be ruled. But i got to tell you, Satan is the principality, the power of his airways. And if you don't cut him off, and I'm telling you, you'll be watching something, and if you don't switch that channel, that's why I don't like TV, because I don't like commercials, and I was born up in TV. And I was uh, nurtured up in TV. And everything was all about TV. And I made movies and did loads of TV. And, and, and yet, everything that, uh, you know, that I was so warped in is now even so much worse today. And I, and then I, I excuse them, but it's flowered compared to what's going on today. They got cussing and such. And mine was ridiculous. Mine was evil. It was wicked. And it's day was still, it's still wicked, it's still filthy. Filthy communication. God don't like it. And it needs to be cut. God does not like it when we take his name and curse his name and then we buy and watch people curse his name. God don't like it. That, and, and because I could not get off of the television, I had to I had to do a fasting and pray. And I had fasting and praying off the TV for about a year until finally I had to get rid of it. Because my, my brain just, because when I began to, I'm like, oh my God. Because, you know, you become a little, a little more pure inside. Yeah. And then you see, I can't believe you're doing that to God. Why are you doing that to God? You know? But Satan rules that way. He's the power and the principality of this air, the air waves. The music, be careful what you put in here. Don't listen. When your children got the thing in the air, listen to what, see what they play. Don't just let them play that. I know you love it, huh? Yeah. Oh, whip your tail. <laughs> what you got inside your ear? What you listening to? Makes a difference, saints. Okay, so it says in Revelation chapter 21, it says, He that overcometh inherits the kingdom of God, be as God, to be my son, but the fearful. The unbelievers, the abominable, the whoremongers, the idolaters. All idolatry is going to hell. All unrighteous, the fornicant, men with men, doing that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves a recompense in their error, which was meat. Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Yeah. To be filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, full of maliciousness. This is in the book of Romans. Full of maliciousness, envy, murder, deceit, malignity. Whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud boasters, and inventors of evil things, impossible, implacable, and merciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but take pleasure, and here's where we come in, not only do the same, 
but take pleasure in them that do them. Saints, that one whipped my tail. In uh, the book of Ephesians, it says, neither covetousness nor no unclean person who is an idolater hath any inheritance, hath any inheritance in uh, the kingdom of God and of Christ. <sighs> Great, that's in Galatians, Ephesians, hello. Um, Ephesians chapter 5, he said, Be there for followers of God as dear children, and walk in love, as Christ also has, it, it has uh, given himself as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Let me tell you, fornication smells bad. Yeah. It don't smell good, you know? It's only when you're with the Lord that you're with the husband, and it's you and him. There's, you can't defile that then. Amen? But fornication, all in cleanness, covetousness, let it not once be named among you, Okay? I messed up a couple of times in uh, in the Lord, and uh, I felt like a red hot whore. That's the honest to God truth. I felt like a red hot whore. I never felt like a whore when I was in the world and sinning. I didn't even think it was a sin. It's amazing. Do you know how you? Okay. So God said, "See neither." Fornication or unclean person, that covetous, let it not once be named among us becoming saints. Neither filthiness, and we need to repent. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking, which is not convenient. And I'm talking about foolish talking in um, those jokes that are full of sexual innuendos. It's commercials. Commercials that, this is all about sexual stuff. In commercials, is how to get you to buy the product. I mean, it's a can of soup. You know, come on, it's soup. You're going to get a man if you buy this soup. Yeah. You know, and, you, uh, you, and then they have, the, they have the pill now, that pill, that you can have more sex. Of course, it's going to make you bleed internally. You have headaches and vomit and, and, and you know, all that stuff. It's, it's like they got all these side effects, and they, they run through the, that's why I can't stand the commercial. I can't stand listening to talk about this. And then they have all these side effects, and they run through them. Yes. Now, but you never know want you must check with your doctor so that you don't end up with headaches. This pill gives you headaches. You'll have wonderful sex, but you'll be vomiting. You'll have uh, kidney disease. You're mentally insane, but you'll have great sex. <laughs> and people buy this stuff. Oh, I gotta have this pill. I gotta have this pill. You know? Like, we need more of that in the world. We're so We're making, you know what the Lord, the Lord said to me, he says, uh, doing drugs, making babies. The whole world is doing drugs and making babies. And doing drugs and making babies. And they're coming out mentally disturbed. And they want to kill each other. And they put them on the drugs and to keep them quiet. Yet the child is a human battery. It's a human battery. Got batteries in his arms. I still got batteries in my arms. And I got no kidneys and I got batteries. Yeah. <laughs> they get a battery, they got one big battery in their head, right? They're like batteries. They got all this perfect stuff. That's so, yeah. They should be able to run, but they can't. They, they're sitting in front of commuters. And, and, you know what? Jesus is coming. It's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing. What's that? The, oh. What's that bird going through? Oh, thank you, Jesus. I think it's the Thessalonians. We're almost finished, okay? This has been a big night. I think we had fun. You know, you should have a good time in the Lord. Yes. God says, he, you know what? The, the, the greatest place that you can get to is the fullness of joy. Right? What's that scripture? Um, of the fullness of joy? At thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. In his presence is fullness of joy. At his right hand are pleasures forevermore. Now, I'm sitting on my couch. I'll give you this last thing. I'm sitting on my couch. Just came out of the hospital from three and a half months. I had surgery. Only from find out that the doctor lied. Said I needed surgery. I didn't need surgery at all. What well, should have cost her 20000 cost and half a million. And, and that's what they do. Whenever they say you need surgery, you're going to die. And I believed them. I believed them. Because I was, you know, I was coming from another 
another hospital that was giving me way too many drugs and I didn't like the, the drugs. I, I don't like the drugs, you know. And so when I go into the hospital, I don't take a whole lot of pain killers. And they put me, they kept, I would say, please don't give me the pain. You know, and, and, and they're evil like that. Satan is, he's in the hospitals too. But you know, Jesus is with us. Jesus didn't let me die. Thank you. Everything's working for your good and all things work for your good. To them that love the God, the love of the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And he will not withhold any good thing. Thank you, Jesus. And, and one of my favorite scriptures to that accord is acknowledge God in everything you do. He'll direct your path. Amen. So this happened years ago, but I'm in the hospital, and I went from with this hospital, I literally fled the hospital. I literally ran, I was a, a block from the house, and I ran home in my pink pajamas. <laughs> I left. I could not, they were giving me too much drugs, they wouldn't stop giving me the drugs, and so I ran. I snuck into the elevator. <laughs> Tore out of that place. And went home, and then I went to another, uh, some, one of my friends took me to a hospital I'd never heard of, and, and so it's there that another devil lied to me. Yeah. And I believed him. I'm sad that I believed him. But, you know, when somebody tells you you're going to die, you believe these doctors. You yeah. can't believe them. Yeah. You know, but you learn. Yeah. You learn. I've learned from every single song. I've learned from your lessons. Yeah. And so I had, uh, he, he got me. And I came out 90 pounds. I was, uh, oh, I had, Oh God, and all he had to do was give me medicine. But he lied, he lied, he lied to me. And you know, and I had to forgive him for years. I'm like, oh my God, I'm gonna forget this man. I went to him and said, why did you open me up? You didn't need to have an emergency surgery. We could have just, you could have just given me medicine. He got nervous, oh, well, that's the way we do it. I'm like, Lord, help me just forgive the man. I believe, I'm a big believer about forgiveness. Come tomorrow, we're gonna talk about forgiveness in a big way, all right, in a big way. Because I'm a big one for forgive, and you shall be forgiven. You can't get him. You can't see God if you don't forgive. If you're walking in unforgiveness, amen. It's just an apart. I had to forgive my daddy for beating me for hours upon hours every other day. I had to forgive my dad for sending me into the um, to to school, black and blue, and bleeding all over, and for punching him in the face every time I didn't know a timetable. I had to forgive my daddy. If my daddy was here, I'd I'd wash his feet. I tell you, I'd wash his feet and I'd beg him to Jesus. I would. And so if you got daddies out there, when I first came to the Lord Jesus, he said, the, the prophet, amen, he stood at the pulpit and I was at the back of the church and uh, now I sit in front of people. Because <laughs> I got to hear, you know what I mean? Otherwise I'd be looking back, what are you doing? What are you doing? You know? so I stand in front. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And so they uh, they said, you want to be saved? And I said, yeah, I want to be saved. But I would do that to most all churches because I you know, I was vanity back there. And I wanted you to know that I was in the house. <laughs> and I just love the hand clapping. <laughs> I'm going to tell them myself, okay? I was like, they said, they want to be saved. I got you! <laughs> I'm alive. a mess. Thank you, Jesus. But I did. I joined everybody's church. <laughs> everybody's church. I died all the tribes. Yes, I did. Did everyone want to be saved? Yes! Didn't you do that last week? Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> That's good. You're not laughing. I'm going to be not laughing. <laughs> you want me to make you shoot again? <laughs> Anyhow, thank you, Jesus. But so I walked up to the prophet, and the prophet, it was the first time I'd ever had a prophet prophesy to me, and he said, he said, he didn't know who I was as vanity because he was prophet, like you didn't know who I was. <laughs> you know, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. And that's, that's a good thing. I, God, I, you know, I was very ashamed for many years, and to me, when I look at it, it's a shame. Vanity is just a shame. Mm -hmm. My book is called Blame It on Vanity. But vanity was me. Yeah. So I I didn't I stopped blaming it on her and started blaming it on me. Yeah. Anyhow, 
This is what the prophet says to me. The first words he said, Jesus said that he's sorry for what your daddy did to you. Wow. I never heard those words. My father didn't even say those words. And I'd never heard my daddy say he loved me except for on his deathbed. And I didn't believe him. You know? And he's, the prophet said, Jesus said that now he wants you to go home and he wants you to have your last cry about it. Wow! He, Jesus was giving me a last cry. I had been crying all these years about my father. I blamed everything on my dad. I blamed every little thing on my dad. If I didn't get that family, it's my daddy's fault. <laughs> if I didn't get that family, it's my daddy's fault. Everything's my daddy. My daddy was dead, and I was still afraid of him. Jesus told me, go home and have your last cry. All right. And there may be some of you that have to have your last cry. But if God would tell me that, Amen. upon meeting, upon coming the first time from the prophet's mouth, Jesus said, you get your last cry. I knew that was it. I went home, I had my last cry. Amen? All right, stand to your feet. Let's stop this. Let's stop this. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's pray. I don't know if you want to come to the altar and you want God to do whatever that it takes. And you see, salvation, saved, being saved, is saved from anger, saved from anxiety, saved from fretting against the workers of iniquity. And it says, trust in the Lord. You may be at trust right now where you need to, okay, you have trust, but now you need to move on into the area of commitment. Okay? Where you're committed to Jesus. And then you may be a commitment, but now you need to move on into the area of delight. And delight is wonderful. Hallelujah. I live in delight. I wear it on my face. It's awesome to delight in the Lord. Like the pastor said, you'll never get bored. I've never been bored in you. My head's always moving. Amen. I'm always looking for somebody to be saved. Delight yourself. When you delight yourself, you'll start witnessing and, and you'll be in commitment. You're committed to witness to somebody, not just going to keep it so. And then you'll rest in him. It don't matter what's going on. It don't matter how many times they open me up. It don't matter what they say. I rest in him. Rest. I remember I was sitting on my couch. I'd come home. And I was so weak, 90 pounds. And I said, I stood and said, Jesus, look at me. Don't you love me? Look at me. I said, I'm so weak, Lord. How much more do I, am I going to go through with this stuff? And I heard Jesus Jesus, he said, Denise, I want you to come into my fullness of joy. And I said, right now? <laughs> it made no sense. I never heard God heard. I never heard. I heard the scripture, but I never knew what it was like to live in his fullness of joy. I live in his fullness of joy. I got Joy. And messed up. Jesus doesn't want us just to have joy, but he wants to live his life and live in it. Live right there. Yeah. And no matter what's going on in the world, you'll find something to just be joyful about. Yeah. And you can bring people out of their mess and oh, comfort them with the comfort that you know you found in Jesus. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, if you want to come to the front. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You want to come to the front? I, you know what? This is the way I always do it. I say, let's all come to the front. Come on, let's all. Let's do something different. And if you really want to do something different, how about you get to your knees? Maybe you ain't been to your knees in a long time. You don't even know what your knees look like anymore. Your knees don't hurt. You've been so easy to grab each other's hand and hold each other's hand. You know what? Let's just do this like you're coming and you're coming to the Lord. And 
and, and still hold each other's hand. How about you hold Jesus' hand? How about you get, you want to know how to do this? How you do it? You get, you can get down with me if you like, okay? And I'm going to stay right down here until God gets me up. And I'm going to put my head to the floor, okay? Because maybe, maybe you've forgotten how to do it. Maybe you've forgotten how to humble yourself in the side of the room and let him lift you up. But you know what does feel good down here? It feels real good, Jesus. I love it, Lord. I love to be able to come to you in prayer, Father. We, the saints, we come. We love you. Merciful God. There's so much more you want to do with us. So much more you want to teach us. So much more you want to show us. So much more you want to love us. And sh not let me give us so much wisdom. We need wisdom. We need wisdom, Lord. We need wisdom. We need knowledge, Father. We thank you tonight, Jesus. We thank you for the word. We thank you for the laughter. Uh, you said that laughter is a good medicine. It's a good medicine. You know, I've had so many surgeries, Lord God, I know. You know I need laughter in my life. I thank you. We thank you for the fullness of joy. Oh, Father, I pray for your people tonight. Why don't you put your hand on your head right now. Touch yourself. You need to learn how to touch yourself when you got... You come when things are coming against you. Think about strange and the fiery trials that come against you as if some strange thing has happened to you. Acknowledge God. He'll direct your path. And everything, you know that everything is working for your good. Lord, we thank you for everything is working for our good. Every little thing, every test that you ever put us through, that was ordained by your hand, Father. And we're thankful because... It gives us and helps us to have the fruit of the Spirit. It blesses us with the fruit of the Spirit. It gives us wisdom, and it gives us joy, and it gives us love, and it gives us patience. Oh, Father, and as we place our hands on our hands, Lord God, we know that you're with us. You're not going to leave us. Hallelujah, we thank you that we're not going to leave you. We thank you that you love us. You're our refuge in times of trouble. All we have to do is cry out your name. We don't have to we don't have to fret. We don't have to fret against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down. But we need to pray for our enemies in this in this New Testament. We need to pray for them that despitefully use us, abuse us, and say all manner of evil and revile against us falsely, Lord, because you're making us prophets of today. You're making us preachers, Lord God. You're calling us to preach the word. You're calling us to speak the word. You're calling us to prophesy. You call us to tell the truth about you, Lord God, and not to be ashamed, not to be afraid. You said, fear not, 365 times in the Bible, you said, fear not, Lord. Fear not, that's one for each day, Father. We thank you that we are not fearful, we are not full of fear. But we are the prophets, Lord God, that come to preach and testify your word, Lord God. Filled with power, filled with power and authority. Laying hands on the sick and casting out devils and doing cures. Father, for you have given us wisdom, and you will continue to give us revelation. And it will be abounding through us, Lord God. And you've given us a mouth to speak, and you said, don't be afraid. You will neither be afraid, but open your mouth and speak, for I've given you words to speak. Hallelujah. And we believe and trust you, Lord God. We believe and trust you, Jesus. Very little thing that we're going through. We believe and we trust you, Lord Jesus, that you'll take us through the fires, even those fires that seem to come up from hell. The lying devils and demons that, that, that think that they got it over us. But you, we are, you are our refuge, Father. And you love your people and you're not letting go. You're not letting go. We thank you, Father. Pathetic words. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In a small, still boy. He says, everything, everything, everything is working for your good. Everything you've ever been through is for somebody else. To give glory to God, beautiful testimonies all up inside you. Oh, for he loves you and he's not going to let you go. Hallelujah. Cry for wisdom. Cry for knowledge. Cry for understanding. Hallelujah. Bless the children, Father, for they love you. Keep the children, Lord God. They're the apple of your eye, Father. We are the apples of your eye. But the babies, you love your children. 
Let them always praise you and rise up in the church and be sanctified. Let their little houses be sanctified. Rest inside and bless them with the Holy Ghost, Father. Bless them to obey you and to bless Mama and Papa and to be obedient. We thank you for the pastor tonight. We thank you, Lord God, that you're doing great, mighty things to him, Lord. He's just getting started. <laughs> oh, yeah, Lord, so he's just getting started. He's just getting started. He's just getting started. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. That's a good word right there. I'm just getting started. They met with Moses. It took 120 years. <laughs> he just got started. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. He had 40 years messed up doing stuff he shouldn't have. Next eight, 40 years, just all oh, doing more stuff and learning. And, and then that's 80 years gone by. He ain't even started yet. Ministry started 120. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless, bless the elders, Father. That they, when they go to walk these streets, that he would open up his hand and he would speak and minister the word God with joy and with loving kindness. With joy and loving kindness and that his hands would be hands of healing and resting. Hallelujah. Let the gifts that you have imparted on the pastor impart them also on your elders in Jesus' name. And the woman of God May she always be there to be that beautiful helpmate unto her husband, resting in God, knowing that no matter what kind of thing comes up inside the house, <laughs> thank you, Jesus, that there's always a prayer for it. Thank you, Jesus, and for the children that are growing up, that you have no control of, but God, that God has over prayer. Blessed to be that prayer warrior in the house in Jesus' name. Bless the mama who loves the children who brings them up and grows them up in the word of God and teaches them how to pray and the little boys that grow up to be the prophets in the house. Lord Jesus, they may go through some things, Father. I always bring them right back where they belong. And Mama, who's had to go through so many pains, so many pains for the other half, Lord Jesus. So much sorrow. We thank you, Father, that she can Rest in you, cry out for the rest in God, and be at peace, Lord. We thank you for the peace that surpasses all understanding. We thank you that you use, you use us and our gifts, Lord. Help our Father to get through those hard times, those trials, many other afflictions of the righteous God shall deliver you out of every single one of them. other in the spirit. I thank you, Father, for this woman of God. You've given her a, a spirit of sweetness and kindness, Lord God. I see no bitter spirit up in this woman. I see no judgmental spirit up in this woman, Father. Lord, I, I thank you, Lord God, because you're going to bless her. All the sorrow that she's ever had, you said you're going to give her double for her trouble, Father. Father, there's dreams inside of her, secret dreams inside of her that she wants to accomplish. Lord God, I pray that you do that right now, Father, that you begin those dreams right now, that she begins to say, I can do it all things in Christ who strengthens me. There's nothing that I can't do. 
I can do anything that Christ has called me to do. Father, I thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you that you've taken her from a place, even of torment, in a mind, Lord God, and you've blessed her. You've blessed her to come out of that. You've given her joy and peace and love and kindness. He's put it all over you. He's put it all over you. He's given you a voice to sing to his people. How do you lift up his king? Tell the world, tell the world how much you love him. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He's giving you that voice. Hallelujah. Bless the name, people of God. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, my friends. Thank you, Pastor.